Normally when we take a sum of different indicators or mean of different indicators, we assume that those indicators are unidimensional measures of one thing or one concept and the purpose of taking a sum is to create a more reliable composite measure than any of the individual components that go into the composite are. There are also other reasons to take sums or weighted sums or means of indicators and uh, that is called index construction. When and why would you want to use indices instead of raw variables is, is the topic of this video. To understand indices we have to first understand what is a scale variable, what is a non-scale variable. I refer to as a scale variable a variable that is part of a measurement scale. For example these three questions here form uh, a survey scale that is supposed to measure companies' innovativeness. This is a unidimensional scale or at least it's supposed to be a unidimensional scale and uh, what that means that the items measure the same quantity and the items are highly correlated. So we expect a highly innovative company to uh, answer highly on all these items here. And there is also another assumption if, uh, or, or the implication of these assumptions it's that uh, if these items were perfectly reliable then the normal way we model these items would lead to the items to be perfectly correlated. In other words, a scale variable, two scale variables are assumed to be uncorrelated only because they are unreliable. This can be of course relaxed by using more advanced modeling techniques but this is the common factor analysis assumption. There are of course items that are variables that don't follow these assumptions. So we, I call them non-scale variables. So every, all other variables that don't, are not scale variables are non-scale variables. And uh, items could be measuring distinct quantities, for example, person's height or weight, and items may correlate highly or they may not correlate highly. Typical examples of useful non-scale variables where we would make an index are alcohol consumption. So the alcohol consumption is the sum of the amount of beer, wine and hard liquor that you drink. And uh, these three categories are probably not very highly correlated because some people tend to favor beer over wine and some people tend to favor wine over beer and not many people drink hard liquor, for example. So that's, that's one category of variables where it makes sense to do an index. Another one is that the variables that go into the index are manifestations, different kind of manifestations of the same behavior. So for if a company wants to do supply chain redesign, for example, that can be done in a multiple different ways. So if we say measure, for example, whether the company has taken uh, any of, let's say, 15 different actions that they could do to redesign their supply chain, then uh, taking an index of those indicators to measure the overall decree of supply chain redesign would be a reasonable thing to do. So how do you justify indices and, and when would you uh, use indices? Woolridge's econometrics book provides a good example of when you would use an index. In his example he is using schools and different expenditure categories. The expenditure categories, how the school spends their money, are correlated because schools that have more money spend more and then schools that are poor don't spend as much. If we have, let's say, 20 different ways that schools can spend money, and then we have, uh, let's say, 100 schools running a regression analysis would be a bit problematic because uh, of multicollinearity. So the idea would be that because we have so many categories, we can't really say whether any of them matters independently. What if we are interested in the, in the more general question, does uh, the school expenditure, how much money you spend overall and not whether it's in a specific category, how does that influence student performance? Then we, would take, we could take a sum of all the spending categories and then use that as an explanatory variable in a regression analysis with the student performance as the dependent variable. That would make a lot of sense unless we are specifically interested in a particular category and how much that contributes. So when our research interest is in this uh, higher level concept like spending instead of uh, spending in a particular category and when we have a small sample size then taking an index would be a reasonable thing to do. Of course if we had a million schools in our sample which uh, it's unrealistic but if we have that then 
modeling of each of these expenditure categories as separate explanatory variables in the regression analysis would be possible and that would be the ideal thing to do. When we do our indices there are a couple of statistical assumptions that we make and then we have to decide whether those assumptions are reasonable. So let's consider that we have an index C defined as a sum of x1, x2 and x3. For simplicity I'm just using a sum, I could also be using a weighted sum. The index can be used as an independent variable or as a dependent variable in the regression analysis. If we use the, independent, uh, the, regression, uh, the index as an independent variable, that is the same as assuming that all of these variables x1, x2 and x3 here in the regression model have the same effect beta1 on the dependent variable. Does it make sense to assume that they are the same? The model probably is, is not strictly correct but if we are interested in uh, just understanding the overall level of, of, of spending of a school, then taking the sum of different spending categories would be okay. If we are interested in uh, understanding the, the effects on person's height and weight on, for example, how much the person uh, exercises, then uh, assuming that those two height and weight have the same effect would be unreasonable because that's so unrealistic and we normally want to know the different effects of height and weight. So what if we have the index as a dependent variable? The scenario is very similar. In this case uh, having an index as a dependent variable is the same as having a separate regression model for each component that goes to the index. And uh, we assume that the independent variable z here has the same effect beta 1 on each part of the index components. For example, if we are modeling how much the change in the principal of a school influences the spending, then uh, running that kind of model would be reasonable if we're only interested in the overall level of spending and not specifically on any spending categories. Trying to understand how wh whether exercise influences the sum of your height and weight would be unreasonable because uh, you can't change your height by exercising but you can influence your weight. So whether it makes sense to use indices can be also uh, uh, thought through this uh, approach. Does it make sense to assume or approximate all these effects to be the same as effects or as, as causes of the, of the index? So a summary of how do you do indices and when would you like to make one? The the idea of indices is that uh, the construct an index doesn't, uh, doesn't validate anything. So you can take sums of things that are unrelated, sums of, thi sums of things that are invalid or unreliable. Just the act of taking a sum does not provide you any reliability or validity evidence. Therefore, if you take variables and do a sum, you have to validate and assess their reliability separately before you start forming the index. If we are doing, a, for example, a stock indices then we know that the, the stock values, individual stock values are valid and reliable by definition because that's, that's, the numbers are what they are. If we have survey measures we, we ask people how much wine they drink, how much beer they drink, how much hard liquor they drink, then we have to validate and assess the reliability of those survey measures before we form an index. Then we have to uh, justify the index and uh, does it make sense to, to sum these three different, three different variables? I can think of two different justifications. One is that the variables that go into the index present different quantities or different forms of the same thing. So wine, beer, hard liquor all present different forms of alcohol. Or they present different ways that the behavior can manifest. For example, uh, different ways that you can redesign your supply chain. The third thing that you have to do is to justify why are you using an index over separate items. And this has to do with the level of, uh, of theorizing. So are you interested in a higher level question of, for example, does supply chain redesign matter at all? Or are you interested in understanding uh, what kind of supply chain redesign matters? Are you interested in whether uh, alcohol drinking or beer drinking versus wine drinking causes health problems and so on. 
The justification can also rely on sample size. So if you have a small sample, then that, that sets limitations on what we can do. If the sample is very small, then estimating these different effects of different index components is going to be so imprecise that it doesn't make sense. So in small samples, indices are probably more useful than the separate row variables. So that must be justified in your research report. Then the final thing is that uh, how do you set the weights? The index weights should not be defined empirically because there is no uh, good way of doing so without causing problems. So you set the weights based on, on theory. For example, uh, if you have no idea of how much those different indicators should contribute to the index, you don't know whether one indicator is more important than another one, use equal weights. And that's, uh, that's typically, uh, that's probably the best, best recommendation in any case. Finally, if you do indices, which often is a reasonable thing to do, just to get your study published, it may be a good idea to avoid uh, the term formative or formative measurement or causal indicator in your study, because otherwise reviewers will challenge you to defend that your indicators cause the construct, and that's, uh, that's the key problem, that's an unrealistic thing in the formative measurement literature. So to summarize, taking indices of different variables is okay, but saying that the indices cause the construct, that is the problematic idea.